Number two, make your whole life a prayer. Prayer is a loaded word that for a lot of people brings up images of forced pieties in church. The judgmental God and images of children on their knees saying, God bless on him. But if we can get all that out of our head, we've got a better chance at understanding true prayer. True prayer is to enter into an ongoing relationship with the highest power you can imagine and hold it accountable for anything and everything in your life. Thank it when you feel grateful. Curse it when you feel wrong, but never doubt for an instant that you are helpless without it. Trust it, become its instrument, but let it know in no uncertain terms what it is that you want. The Bible says to pray without ceasing. In the book, The Way of a Pilgrim, the protagonist takes this to mean constantly repeating the Jesus prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, sinner. And this may be a good practice, and it may lead somewhere, but it's not what Rose meant. To spend your life praying is not the same as making your life a prayer. To make your life a prayer is to hold in your heart your greatest desire, your highest intention, and be prepared to do anything and everything you are asked as the granting of it unfolds. In practice, you will be asked to do far less than you might imagine but just enough to give you opportunities to waver. Don't. <clears throat> Hold up your end, and your desire will be fulfilled. Often when Rose voiced this suggestion, he added a phrase at the end of it. Make your whole life a prayer, he said, and it will be granted instantly. Okay, here we go, drum roll. The number one Richard Rose tip for serious seekers is betweenness. Mm -hmm. It's fitting that the number one should be a single word. It's like that scene in The Graduate that Dustin Hoffman character is trapped in a graduation party. His parents do it so they can invite all their friends. And everywhere he turns is somebody fawning over and giving him banal advice. And there's no place he'd rather, but any place he'd rather be than there. And finally, one of his father's business partners corners him and grabs him by the shoulder and stares him in the eye dramatically and we think finally maybe something meaningful is going to get said. Ben? Yes, sir. I have just one word for you. Yes, sir. Plastics. <laughs> just how do you mean that, sir? <laughs> <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> as far as I know, Rose coined the word between us. And if I had just one word for you today, that would be it, between us. But just how do I mean it? And how did Rose mean it? It's an elusive concept, not easily explained, but once you stumble onto it and feel it, you know everything there is to know about it. Simply stated, between us is a way of holding your head so that a desire becomes manifest in your life experience. It's a method by which you tap into the law of creation and bend it to your will. A method for transcending the accepted paradigm in which we're trapped. A paradigm that does not allow for creation on demand. Rose sometimes called it, sometimes called it white magic. If you hold your head between two thoughts, he said, you can perform miracles. Thought, no thought, creation. Betweenness can be used to get anything a person wants in life, from the most mundane to the most exalted. As an experiment, Rose used it to get the cards he wanted, dealt him in poker. But most importantly, he also taught that betweenness could and should be employed as a means to self-realization. Used in this way, he referred to it as ultimate betweenness. <coughs> I never really understood the concept of ultimate and as a seeker, I never consciously employed it. But I've come to the conclusion that after 37 years of beating my head against various walls, what finally did the trick was that I somehow arrived at a state of ultimate betweenness, and that this state proved irresistible to grace. Which is not to say that in any way I caused it to happen, but there's not a disconnect between desire and actuality. 
in fact, just the opposite. An intense, unconflicted desire for truth may be the single most important aspect of the spiritual path. At the September 2007, I think it was, TAP meeting, I did a 90-minute workshop here on betweenness. And in preparation for that, I found myself breaking it down into four composite elements that can be talked about individually. Intention, confidence, gratitude, and indifference. To be able to walk that razor's edge of holding those all in your experience and in your life and in your head at the same time is betweenness. But it's much simpler than that. And it's um, not the sum of its parts. It's a very simple thing that can be arrived at intuitively. A true master of betweenness can manifest very quickly. People call it a miracle. Jesus was a master of betweenness. All the Siddhis, the, the powers that are described in the Yoga Sutras are examples of betweenness. Um, Patanjali called it making san, samyama. An unconflicted desire given 100% attention in a state of betweenness will manifest immediately. Truly, you can move mountains, or better yet, open the door to the absolute.